Let me explain how to use the data sheet for analyzing pumping tests using the Jacob analysis. We put together this data sheet to make doing the Jacob analysis easier. It really is the same analysis that you've calculated by hand already, but the data sheet just makes recording the information in the field easier and doing the analysis in the field uh, will also be easier. So the upper block of the data sheet right here is information about the site. And we just have some fill in the blanks that prompt you for writing down and recording information that is important, the pumping well, the monitoring well, where the data is being recorded, uh, location, things like that. And then the next block down is information about the test, and in particular, about the wells. So the length of the screen, the distance that the monitoring well is from the pumping well, um, that sort of thing. The, the, also here is the um, whether there's a check valve on the pump. So this will be important because if there is a check valve, then when you turn the pump off, the water that's in the pipe that goes from the pump up to the ground surface won't flow back into the well. But if there's not a check valve, then that water in the pipe will flow back and you'll have a sudden rise in the water level in the well during recovery that will be anomalous. So having this information about the check valve can be helpful when you do the interpretation. And then this next middle block is for the results. Here are some equations for doing the calculations, and then the values of T and S that you calculate go right here in this middle block. Below that are uh, some columns for writing down the data. So the first column here on the left is the time recorded during the test. So however you're recording the time, uh, you or however you're measuring the time in the field, you just write that value down. And then you want to know the elapsed time That'll be what you use to plot the data up. So there's this column to uh, write down the or to calculate the elapsed time. And the next column is the time that's elapsed since the pump was turned off. And I call this T prime. So when we did the, the analysis of the Jacob analysis, this was called um, T minus T1. So this is really just the time since the pump was turned off. And then the ratio, T over T prime, this was called in the Jacob analysis video, T divided by T minus T1. Okay, this is the time scale that's used to calculate the recovery data. So there's that and that. And then this, is a, this column here is the data that you would measure in the field, the depth to the water. Write down the units. That'll be the units that you're using on, on the tape, the water level tape that you're using. And this is just what you write down in the field. And the next column is uh, the calculation of head. And so this will be done uh, to basically subtract off the initial value. So you have the column of uh, hydraulic head. And then what you'll do is plot up the hydraulic head here as a function of time here for pumping and as a function of this time for recovery. And so the plotting is done on the next page and there are two plots with um, semi-log axes and these are not filled in or at least it, it's intended that you fill these times in yourself with whatever times you need for the, for the test to be conducted and you also will fill in this axis so that you should what you should do is make sure that the test that, that make sure you, your scale is set up so that the data from the test can cover as much of this plot as possible so you plot the data up and then fit the uh, fit the late time data uh, to with a semi-log straight line and hopefully uh, there is a semi-log straight line that forms and you can fit those data and then to do the analysis you need the slope and the T0 intercept. So I guess a couple of things to remind you of and they're shown here in this text. When you fit the data you want to fit the late time data here preferentially uh, instead of the early time. The early time typically you expect to curve up like this. It's possible that other kinds of things can happen during pumping tests, but this is 
kind of the idealized case. So you fit the, the late time data, and then when you determine the slope, you determine the change in Y per log cycle. So this would be the change in Y shown with these heavy black lines, and the log cycle is shown here. So that would be for one log cycle, if you go um, up, up here to 1,000, that's two log cycles. And so the slope is always going to be this change in Y in whatever these units are uh, divided by log cycles. And log cycles will be dimensionless. So the units of the slope will just be um, whatever the drawdown units are here. And you have to remember that you're not going to use these numbers. I say over here in this text that this is the biggest mistake that's the most common mistake that's made. You got to do the, the X scale in log cycles. And then plotting up the recovery data, the thing to remember here is that you're fitting also the late time data. And because this is plotted using this kind of a time scale, the early time plots here. And as time increases, the numbers go get actually get smaller. So this is the data that you fit to get the um, to get the semi-log slope for the um, recovery data. And so I have some other notes here. You can read those and see if that's helpful. And then the last page. Okay, yeah. So sorry. There's t sub zero. And then let me point out that uh, I would put the the results right here. And the results right here, so it's clear um, what results you're obtaining. So actually, this is the, the second to last page, and this page is used for calculating the well efficiency. And there are two ways to do it. The way that I described in the video, the previous video, is shown here, where what you need to do is calculate the expected drawdown at the well due to the transmissivity and storativity that you calculated at a monitoring well, where you use the radial distance equal to the radius of the well. And so this formula here is set up to do that. And you can plug in values and go and do the calculations. I've plugged in some values here to show, show you an example. The other way to do it is if you have data from several different radial distances, what you can do is plot that data up here, like so. And then this is on a semi-log plot, where this is radial distance from the well. And the drawdown, according to the Jacob analysis, is a logarithmic function of distance. So you can plot the data from the monitoring wells here and then extrapolate it with a straight line back to the pumping well. And here, this dotted line or dashed line is at the radius of the pumping well. So you've extrapolated it back, and this analysis then gives you that value there as the expected drawdown at the pumping well. And of course, what you're doing is plotting these data. These are the drawdowns at the particular time when you're having a, a, a matching reference value of drawdown in the pumping well to compare to, to to get the the well efficiency. So you have these two methods of estimating the expected value of drawdown in the pumping well. And you could if you have the data you could try both of them and then put the results down here, calculate the well efficiency as the ratio. So there's the two methods, and yeah. So this is the this is the data that you record. This is also information from the test, and I would write that down on this sheet so that you have that in, as part of the record. Okay. So the steady state specific capacity part of the sheet. What that really needs is that you draw a sketch map. Uh, showing the pumping well and monitoring well locations, and then the location of the nearest stream or water body. 
this calculation is really based on the assumption that the well goes to steady state by interacting with the nearest stream and so that means that it's appropriate for relatively shallow wells it probably is probably is not going to be as appropriate for deeper wells or, or wells in a confined aquifer um, but nevertheless you could you could give it a try the the data that are needed are the um, distances from the stream to the pumping well and you also know need to know the distance from the pumping well to the monitoring well for um, for the other calculations that we've seen so this is your sketch map of the site and what you do to fill it out is uh, this first line is from the well efficiency calculations so this is uh, the uh, SA and SE the S uh, is another uh, S is another symbol for drawdown so this is the actual drawdown and SE is the expected drawdown and if you go 2 pi T times that difference in the, ex the actual and expected divided by Q that's called the skin factor so you put that value here do the calculation put that here there's the distance to the from the pumping well to the stream and we'll call that L and then transmissivity and well radi radius I'm just having you write these down from the previous pages just for convenience and then this is the calculation here uh, just fill in the blanks and one thing that I've added here that wasn't in the earlier video is this thing this uh, skin factor and the reason for including it here is because the steady state specific capacity this is the pumping rate divided by the drawdown in the well if there's a skin on the well then that could cause a big difference in the uh, that could have a major factor be a major factor in the um, uh, the steady state specific capacity particularly in the, the drawdown in the well and so the way that that skin is accounted for is with this skin factor right here and that shows up in the calculations right there so do this out fill in the blanks come up with what the steady state specific capacity is and that's your estimate of the well performance so there's from the sketch map there's from the Jacob worksheet there's L and fill in those blanks and then crunch the numbers and you have the results.